So one year after starting ADT, this patient's PSA rises to 12. And uh, that's fairly aggressive, I would say, because 12 is a pretty high number this quickly, uh, and a year is a relatively short period of time. In our CRPC studies, for example, the median duration that patients have been on ADT before they get CRPC is somewhere between four and six years. Um, so this patient probably has an underlying uh, disease form. Uh, his PSA is uh, just based on the fact that his PSA went from almost zero to 12 in a year, means he has a rapid PSA doubling time. He underwent a next generation uh, scanning modality with fluciclovine. He was found at one pelvic node. So here's the challenge with this patient. We know that there's likely to be cancer in that one pelvic node, but we don't know if all of the cancer is in that one pelvic node. Um, and so the consequence is that he probably does have uh, tumor cells elsewhere. Um, if we were confident that he only had cancer packed into that one node, we could argue to do a surgery or radiate that node and eliminate it. Uh, but the reality is he probably has some bone marrow-based disease that isn't uh, quantifiable enough with a scan. Uh, and so he has non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, assuming that we check his testosterone and it's less than 50, which I'm sure it is if he's been receiving the luprolide. Castration resistance is a term that replaced the old term, which was hormone refractory prostate cancer. And the reason why we use this term is to imply that the disease has become resistant in the context of a castrate level of testosterone. Some people think it means we've done surgical castration, which we have not. It simply re uh, refers to the level of testosterone being under 50. Uh, and so that is a term that entered the clinical lexicon uh, with the FDA approval of abiraterone, the, ab the FDA approval of enzalutamide, because those studies, in a way, told us that hormone therapy can work in this setting, and therefore it made the term hormone refractory prostate cancer uh, seem like a contradiction, in a way. Currently, there are no FDA-approved therapies for non-metastatic prostate cancer. Typically, patients will maintain their androgen deprivation therapy, uh, whether it be an LHRH agonist or antagonist, uh, and may cycle through a variety of secondary hormonal agents, none of such as bicalutamide, nilutamide, uh, and other things, none of, which that have, none of which have been shown to be associated with a survival benefit. The arrival of next generation androgen receptor antagonists will be a welcome addition to the pharmacopoeia in this group of patients insofar as it may allow them to be treated with a well-tolerated treatment that will uh, prevent uh, metastasis from forming and preserve uh, their status as non-metastatic. For patients with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, I typically look at the pace of change of the PSA. I use PSA doubling time as a marker. In this case, with this patient, uh, he has a pelvic lymph node. So one could argue that if his PSA were going up slowly and he just had the one pelvic lymph node, we might argue to maybe treat this with radiation. But this patient's PSA is going up very quickly, and it's almost exponential. Uh, and, and in that case, I generally think exponential rise is associated with systemic disease and probably not something that will benefit greatly from local therapy. So I would go in a, in a situation like this, uh, I would consider treating this patient with a systemic therapy if I have one, and typically it would be a secondary hormonal therapy. Next generation AR targeted agents are considered a standard of care, I think, currently. I, I refer to both enzalutamide, which actually targets the androgen receptor, and enzalutamide, which really doesn't, it reduces androgens. Uh, we have apalutamide, which we're expecting will become available, uh, a very active drug and looked really good in phase one and two trials. Darolutamide similarly looks very good in phase one and two trials and is in phase three studies. So I think the future for this management of this disease will be the selective use of AR-targeted drugs in patients with non-metastatic disease based on a risk profile that's likely to be based mostly on their PSA doubling time. Uh, and, uh, and other factors that could arise, such as genomic profiles and things like that.